Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well, and I hope everybody is having a great evening. This is Ask Muscles, and I'm going to be joined by Dr. Mukherjee very soon. Let me see if I can add her. Yes, I see Dr. Mukherjee. Let me send her a request. Hi. Hello. Good evening, Dr. Mukherjee. I hope you're doing well. You're looking very lovely today. Good evening. Thank you. How are you doing, Pratik? Well, I am doing well. And before we start, I have to ask this. I believe you've been having sleepless nights. I believe you're in a lot of tension. You've been going to the temple in and out. You just cannot wait for Sunday to find out who is going to be the F1 champion this year. Because I think your favorite almost was there. But then, then you know, the, the luck part was not there. So what's your take? Is it going yeah. to be a Hamilton year or is it going to be a Max year? Uh, I think both of them are great drivers and I'm still supporting Max. But at this point, I have no idea who's going to win. I'm I'm really uh, praying for Max though. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that from your post and things like that. <laughs> you are praying for Max. Let's see what happens. So I know you're a big Formula One fan. Okay, coming to today's topic. I know today's topic is very close to you. We have uh, put it out to a lot of uh, people out there already. We're talking about physiotherapy. Now, if you say physiotherapy, to my mind, it comes a superpower, a gift only a few have, or how do I say it? it's like a miracle workers thing. Uh, now, today, you know, physiotherapists are there everywhere. You look at IPL, you look at the English Premier League, you look at the major leagues in America, everywhere. Physiotherapists play the most important role. Even Formula One, we know physiotherapists play a very important role. Now, how does, you know, can you explain to the people out there about physiotherapy in your words? How do you guys do this miracle? You know, like I like to call you, you know, the miracle worker or, you know, the pain whisperer, what I really like to call. Explain to the people a little about physiotherapy. Let, give them a little knowledge about physiotherapy. Okay. So what I wanted to tell people is physiotherapy is basically a holistic approach where we are treating somebody who is not a passive receiver of the treatment. Like we don't just give medicines to the person and okay, the medicine will do the job or the surgery will do the job or the bandage will do the job. We actually get the client actively involved in their own treatment. So we go ahead with restoring mobility and function completely. And along with that, we also help in assessment, whether that be of a player or an athlete, as you said, that they are involved in all teams. Along with that, following up with them, checking the way they walk, the way they run. So people have this misconception that only when you have pain, you should be going to a physiotherapist. Uh, I would like to clear that. No, that is because we not just help with pain. We also help in increasing the range of movement of the joint. So if you have had stiffness, restricted movement, even even their physiotherapy helps. If you have been wanting to run for a longer duration or a better mileage or improve your timings for a marathon or you're an athlete trying to improve your performance or you're just a regular person just sitting and trying to, you know, be energetic throughout an entire day of 12 hours of work and playing and going to the gym and taking care of the kids and cooking at home. So no matter what your requirements are, physiotherapists can help you improve your performance and your quality of life. And another thing that people do not know is there's so much more than musculoskeletal physiotherapy, which is available out there. You have uh, different kinds like in musculoskeletal, you have sports physiotherapy and manual therapy. Manual therapy is the treatment done by hands. Uh, manual techniques and mobilizations are included in that. Along with that, you have cardiorespiratory physiotherapy where we do it for cardiac conditions like uh, heart attack, heart failures, uh, or we also do it for uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases like asthma or going forward with bronchitis. So we go ahead with treatment for all of them. Along with that, we also have physiotherapy for geriatric populations specifically. And one of the major groups is neuro rehab, 
So neuro rehab basically has two divisions, sub divisions. One is for children, uh, including uh, cerebral palsy and uh, uh, developmental disorders that children suffer with, as well as for adults where uh, people with spinal cord injuries, traumatic brain injuries, they. the people affected from all of those injuries are rehabilitated back to life along with this you have community rehabilitation you have gynecology where you have prenatal postnatal exercise so it's really an exhaustive list of physiotherapy options which are available for everybody so it's like from when you're a child to until like you are dying like throughout the entire time different walks of life people require physiotherapy So I I would say that it it's so much so much out there. So I can just say whoa. You know even I did not know him so much though I have been with physiotherapist I have been interacting with physiotherapist for almost 15 16 years now even I didn't know so much. So it's like all I can say they're like whoa this is huge. So you know coming to my next point you know they say physiotherapist you know they have a brain of a scientist they have the heart of a humanist and they have the you know hands of an artist which is true which even i feel is very true you guys have the most artistic hands as i say though you know pain whisperer the miracle worker but at times i feel physiotherapists are not given the recognition that they deserve at times you know if you ask a common person he'll say ah oh, physiotherapist yes but like you just explained you know you don't get that same recognition what do you feel about that how do you feel about that do you feel the same thing that i'm saying in general Okay so one of the major reasons and of course I do feel that way so I have had my best and worst of experience being a physiotherapist the best being that I have been able to build relations with my clients and my patients for like years because physiotherapy is something so involved with your general life that for example uh, I have been working with this lady who came to me about 2 years ago she had terrible vertigo she couldn't even lift her head while speaking to me like she had to lie down and I got her from there uh, put her into therapy put her into rehabilitation now she's in fitness she does yoga she's able to go ahead with her life very well she's able to do all of her housework go out run jog so all of these things helps me build a relationship with the patient or the client a lifelong relationship which is really like a gift which other doctors don't really get to develop because they will usually meet you once or twice to give you a medicine or probably give you surgery so this has given me one of the best experiences of you know truly being part of people's lives and enriching them uh, one of the worst things about physiotherapy is that it's not so much about physiotherapy it's the way that physiotherapy is viewed because we have people with varying degrees like uh, you also have people who had passed out like years ago where there was not a lot of knowledge or awareness people who have bscs and diplomas so they had studied like Three years or even less than that. Then you have bachelors uh, who study for about four years with a six months of internship at a government hospital, which is strenuous work. Then you have people who have a master's degree who work for almost seven years, so that's like seven years of education. And then you have PhD with almost ten years of education. When we try to uniform everything and we try to put these people in the same category there is a huge amount of difference in knowledge and in skill for somebody who has probably studied then less than 2 to 3 years and somebody who studied 7 to 10 years which is where the specialization comes in practice and people are not aware about this people still have this old mentality we are still following 50 year old treatment techniques we still think that physiotherapists somebody who applies machines no we don't if you go by evidence based practice uh, the uh, any sorts of machines are not utilized anymore um, the therapy itself has become very movement based mobility based so we feel that movement itself is medicine that is what research is pointing towards and that is also what has brought about more difference in people's life so whenever we are talking about physios we need to build awareness in people secondly people don't know who to go to like unfortunately when people have pain and imagine it's a pain with movement an athlete will immediately know yeah i need to go to my physiotherapist i am having pain while bowling but a person who is trying to you know probably reach out in the kitchen take something from the top shelf they have pain who do they go to an orthopedician an orthopedician who is a surgeon whose specialization is surgery 
whose specialization is not physiotherapy who does not deal with people and getting them back onto the field and getting them into playing and movement so that is something that we have specialized in and we have learned which is why people need to be aware that if you have something related to movement a movement related pain a pain with sitting for a long time or a physical pain you need to go to a physiotherapist or you need to go to somebody who is specializing in sports medicine because we constantly work with athletes we constantly work with performers like dancers and singers who have these pain and we get them back we will never tell an athlete oh you have low back pain lie down for two weeks your career is gone we will always be thinking, thinking about how to get them back and that is the kind of approach that people need where you come to us with i have a low back pain with sitting for long so how to get you treated not put you on bed rest not ruin your liver with any unnecessary medications not ruin your pockets with unnecessary radiological exams and get you back on the field asap so that is what a physiotherapist basically does so if people are aware of this i think a lot of people will stop going to the doctors and just popping pills for the time being and getting the symptomatic relief i think it's really important to know that if you have pain with movement you have to go some to somebody who is a movement expert and get it treated so once people get aware of that and they understand our skill and knowledge we will definitely be getting a lot more people involved working with physios on a regular basis so you know i i can see a lot of enthusiasm a lot of love for your profession i've met so many physiotherapists i think now since at the age of 17 i've been interacting with physiotherapists since i've been working in the fitness industry but i don't see people with this dedication this love for the profession i can i can see the energy even through the call my next question i think you've slightly answered it but i still want to touch upon that trigger release massage stretching this is what people think physiotherapy is that's it you know that, that that's the common thing they come with but as you know we as you have been just now saying you know like you did for your client why when you met her she couldn't even put her head up but then you were able to revive today she is running walking so this is what a miracle worker does that is why i love using this term you know the miracle worker or you know the pain whisperer explain to people you know physiotherapy is just not about you know these things by a people where where they think they coming for a trigger release or you know a massage or you know just about stretching it's much larger than that so uh this is one difficulty again which i face uh with a lot of my clients that they usually go on google and they're trying to find the diagnosis and they just tell me you know like how we will go to a store and we want to get okay yeah i want treatment for this thing i know i have this thing so the key element of a good physiotherapist is the right diagnosis the correct diagnosis because if i'm listening to the patient like a patient will never go and tell no i want surgery here you need to cut here and then move this thing and then take this out so why is a person going and telling a physiotherapist what exactly they need because it is our job to diagnose them and how do we diagnose them we take a complete history which is lacking for most of the doctors i mean they don't even spend any time which is why like when we take sessions like i have always been telling you see uh, pratik i want like 45 minutes to an hour like just keep aside that time i have to do a complete assessment i have to find out what's the problem i have to do a history taking then i'll keep digging to find information okay did you travel did you injure before so these are the small small things which makes you a good doctor the attention to detail the attention to you know the small things that would be missed out if i don't get to spend that time so the key to a good physiotherapist is diagnosing a problem which is done with a proper history taking understanding the mechanism of injury if there was any checking the assessment checking the posture checking the limbs doing a measurement for all of that checking your past history for any injuries surgeries anything that you are susceptible to and trust me 50% of the time we already know the answer from these things we don't even have to go ahead with the manual test for that so when we do the manual testing we just do it to be able to ascertain whether what we had in mind is that true or false so post that comes functional movements functional examination which is so important i think every doctor should be doing this i mean i feel pity because sometimes people with back pain have gone to doctors and the doctors don't even touch the back 
back i mean from i don't know where they are getting the information without even touching or without even checking the back without letting them do anything and they were like okay ha you have back pain okay take this medicine eat it for 5 days after that like take bed rest so this is not the way we should be treating we would not treat our national athletes you think that lewis hamilton is treated like that i'm i'm, I'm i don't think so i mean just look at the physiotherapist angela cullen behind one of the seven time like he's the most famous uh, most successful f1 champion in the world so he's a seven time champion and he gives most of that credit to his physiotherapist who has been working day and night in keeping him fit okay so that is the potential of a physiotherapist and i think that we are just being underutilized by uh, thinking that you know okay they only do an ift or an ultrasound or they will only be doing a trigger therapy or a massage which is a word that i hate a lot uh, there is so much more to it there it involves diagnosis it involves treatment and most of the times even though i am a manual therapist i don't go ahead with manual therapy i believe that movement is medicine and that is what research also tells us that sometimes just with strengthening without using any kind of therapy physical therapy on the client the client has shown great improvement again it calls comes from the right diagnosis so i believe that people need to change their opinion on what a physiotherapist can do they can do so much uh, you just need to uh, educate yourself and know about that well you know that's that's so much information coming out and before i you know you know go to the next question yes i know about these people who read the internet or watch a lot of grey's anatomy and come back to doctors and say okay this is how it happens i've seen it on tv so you know i've seen those grey uh, grey's anatomy buffs and you know about like you were saying you know like there's an old saying behind every successful man there's a you know woman behind every successful athlete there's a good physiotherapist i think that is safe to say now so we're looking at trophy number 8 so i think even dr mukherjee will agree on that so we were <laughs> trophy, trophy number 8 and as you say i do i don't agree i don't agree on that i don't want hamilton to win get the extra points you know what i okay now coming to the uh, coming to my uh, the other uh, the more third point what you said is actually so right movement is medicine i have seen this you know personally even in my house you know when my mother i had told you this had met with an accident and her doctor was like you can't move you can't bend and i don't know why she like i am not listening to him and it it used to be difficult for her but she continued her life and i think that is the whole thing that is still kept her going out you know after she met with an accident and things like that she's been able to move walk and carries on with a regular life so as you say movement is medicine guys that's something you guys should make a note of that is actually wisdom coming out okay my next question to you you have been in this industry for 10 years easily so yeah how important you know is for a physio to stay updated you know in every profession we need to keep updating ourselves you know even in the you know like for a person like me i am a sales guy now even for us marketing strategies things like that we keep having you know new updates coming in social media things like that i know even for an extent doctors have that they they do courses they keep updating themselves with the latest technology things like that how how much is that relevant to physiotherapy and how much do you all keep yourself updated i'm sure you're a person must be keeping yourself updated every second day or i think every day so could you explain the people out there that even till now what efforts the dedication you're putting in to improve your knowledge okay so um, i i just wanted to say on a lighter note that uh, you know our parents used to tell that you know uh you just study become a doctor and then life is easy no life is very hard because we realize once we start to study how much we need to study on a daily basis and uh, my hod once told me and i i have kept that in my mind that if i am not reading five research papers on a daily basis i am not in touch with what is happening in the world right now and it is so important because there are things there are treatments there are uh, therapies which become outdated over a period of time and the only way that i will be abreast or any physiotherapist will know about these things is to constantly keep reading so i follow something known as evidence based practice where my entire th- therapy rehabilitation fitness everything is backed by research okay this research has been done on a lot of people there have been systematic reviews which come out on a regular basis and we need to keep following them 
So this helps us in many ways. For example, there are so many things that got outdated initially, like years ago, and even now people follow this. That whenever we had pain anywhere, we would immediately apply a hot pack. Now, what started to happen is people didn't realize that hot pack actually dilates the arteries and veins there, and then that leads to a pooling of blood. So, hence the swelling after an injury goes up. Okay, so only with research we got to find this out, and then we started moving towards cryotherapy or cold pack application. And now you know all of the athletes around the world. You know, after they're going forward with playing and they have a match and they go ahead uh, with like an ice bath or an ice compression. so all of this has come from research and that reduces their pain and leads to a very fast recovery so uh, i think recently i saw one of the cricketers also sitting with like a, a cryo compression bandage and he was just putting up so that came from research okay another thing is that when people used to have pain they used to pop pills or they used, used to just take bed rest and research told us that bed rest is horrible for the human body the human body was meant to move around so when anybody has pain years ago it was suggested like take rest unfortunately even now a few doctors are telling them to take rest which is not required i personally give it like maximum 3 to 5 days if within that time i will be pushing that person to movement why because movement is medicine it gets the blood flowing there it uh, heals the area repairs the muscle repairs the tissue and gets you back to regular activity soon so all of this information that i am getting comes from research or any physiotherapist is getting comes from research if we don't follow research we will not be abreast with what is new i mean medicines we need to keep following research right whatever medicine you used to get for fever 20 30 years ago you will not be getting the same medicine because by that time you will get to know what are the pitfalls of the medicine the same way the physiotherapy treatment which was done years ago like contrast bath or doing an ultrasound or going forward with just ift and then sending them back home those treatments need not be continued if they have gotten outdated that means that there is something better there are better treatment options available so we can only get to know that if we are abreast with the new researches that are coming up and youtube and google is not research guys if you really want to go through research please go to pubmed please put in your keywords learn how to research properly i uh, i think like i'm just taking this a uh, platform to explain that that please i i cannot deal with it any more google doctor so if you really want to research about your condition or about your symptoms please try going to pubmed going to science direct these places have research these places have information on your condition google and youtube is not the place but only research if you understand the research if, if you yes, talk correct if you don't understand, please don't because there is no use you again <laughs> to google to decode it and it is a trouble <laughs> I, 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 but you know she is giving you so much information uh, you know how, how do you how do you put this you know you you cannot become an expert by reading stuff online you know i learned this the hard way okay especially my transformation my weight loss everything it only came when i changed that attitude that i can see things i can read things when i start understand more oh, this is not my forte i have to listen to people that's when things work out so guys they you know you can see the knowledge the information the studies that she's put in and she's still putting in that is why she is good at what she does if we all could do that then we all would have not have problems in life so everybody has a speciality so let you know go to people who have the specialities who can do the best for us now moving on to my next question you in between you know during the uh, initial part of the conversation you said that even a heart patient you know comes to a physiotherapist for a rehab and things like that i didn't know this only when i researched and i was reading i'm like oh god i never knew you know physiotherapy goes there i'm i was still on the blank concept that you know if you're injured or something that's when you go to physiotherapist then as you explain it's right from you know when you're born till you the end of your life is physiotherapist plays a role you know in a different uh, different way i was like wow so you know that that's what it started you know explaining to me now you as i said have had 10 years of experience tell me some of the most challenging cases that you have or lifestyle you know problems that you have seen tell the audience out there maybe you know it will be a little more information because you've added so much honest to change change the outlook at least for a person like me and i'm sure people are tuning in and got to see this video you're going to you're changing their outview 
about physiotherapy tell us about some of your most exciting cases or challenging cases out there or at least a case okay so uh, when talking about cardio respiratory um, you know a physiotherapy uh, what people do not know is it re- it is required for all cardiac conditions so cardiac conditions or heart conditions can be divided into three it can either be an attack or it can either be a failure or it can be a muscle related disease of the heart and for all the three cardiac rehabilitation is required now cardiac rehabilitation is divided into four subtypes so what happens immediately after the accident has occurred in the first 3 to 5 days when the person is bedridden in the hospital so we try to get them to move around so that we can move them to the next stage that is uh, you know walking around at least to be able to go back home okay the second stage that is the outpatient rehabilitation starts when they are at home so either a physiotherapist needs to visit there or now due to telehealth you know we can easily do that visit online you know like we can use uh, all of these information technology available to us like we can use um, zoom or you know whatsapp simple whatsapp or a skype anything to get in touch with these clients help them rehabilitate at home now this rehabilitation helps them get moving in the house you know it's so important to be independent like only a person who cannot get up and go to the washroom by themselves or go and get a cup of water or a glass of water from the kitchen realizes the importance of being physically independent because you know everybody thinks that oh this is not life threatening it's okay but the quality of life is affected by the physiotherapist okay third comes their uh, rehabilitation completely how to get them back to their daily activities okay that means that they have to go ahead with their employment traveling to the office driving cooking eating walking around the house taking care of their kids so that is the longest part of cardiac rehab which happens in the third phase where we almost put them onto a fitness level at this phase people are able to gain a lot of confidence and also get motivated into exercising further and the last is maintenance where we literally exercise with the heart patient through all their life i mean none of us go to the gym and we don't think that uh, you know i'm just going to exercise like 3 to 4 days a week and then after this month i'm going to stop because fitness is lifelong the same way maintenance for cardiac clients is lifelong so a uh, usually a fitness trainer sometimes might not be equipped with all of the information to monitor their vitals their heart rate their bp their oxygen saturation and they might have to work with the physiotherapist lifelong because they'll really be able to understand their health condition completely and be able to give them the required exercise as well as follow up their improvement so cardiac rehab is a very very challenging aspect because it is you know it's like literally life threatening for the client initially when they are trying to get back but they need to get back to normal as soon as possible that's the best way to heal the heart so i think my most challenging uh, times have been when i was at manipal and i was taking care of cardiac rehab because it was so scary and at the t- same time it was exciting you know getting somebody out of the bed from a heart attack getting them to absolute normal movement it was quite amazing you know honestly after listening to this i must you know you know the respect level goes to a different level because honestly if i have to heart had to take care of a heart patient i would be having palpitations myself but you if you're taking care of somebody's rehabilitation especially who has a heart heart issue and things like that wow it is so 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 you know amazing i can understand the sense of responsibility that must be there you know at every step you must have been like i cannot you know it's like flying an aeroplane you cannot have an uh, you know percent of error because there are so many lives around you so i i think you know that's the best way i can relate it's like you being a pilot with so many lives you know rotating around you and you cannot make a percent of error also so it's like double thumbs up doc <laughs> i can all- thank you it is like wow okay now moving on you just touched upon this my next question but i wanted to go in detail into it because i know again this is a subject very close to your heart something i did not believe in and then you actually proved it to me no this happens and there is a you know th- this is the future of physiotherapy digital physiotherapy a concept that is now catching on i believe in it i agree i you know apologize but now i can easily say yes digital physiotherapy works and 
you always advocated for this and when i research studies are showing that people are finding the same effect you know on an online physiotherapy consultation whether you know going to a clinic and things like that when we say we need physiotherapy in my mind no i have to go to a physiotherapist he's going to touch do this that and then only the you know process can start but you have advocated no things have changed it can happen online and you have you have been successfully handling clients online and i think you're breaking this old trend and setting a new trend explain to the people about you know how digital physiotherapy or online physiotherapy is working how is it different okay so telehealth i have actually been doing telehealth for the past 5 years so even before the pandemic hit i mean the pandemic introduced people to uh, options of teletherapy tele rehab but when i was doing it even before that i realized that i was able to reach a lot of people so i had clients from the us dubai singapore and the reason i was able to reach all of them is because we broke the barriers of distance and that is one of the main things so when we check like one of the major causes for morbidity in the world the the largest cause of morbidity in the world is musculoskeletal condition now it is not life threatening but it changes the way you are employed like you will find it difficult to go to work if you have pain or difficult to enjoy your life to get into recreational activities and even activity of daily life like just making your own cup of tea or bending down and lifting something so it is so restrictive and it has a profound impact on people's life and that is when telehealth came into being because in the traditional sense we had to go to a physiotherapist so we have to pay for transport get into our cars get into an auto or cab reach there on time after that we go ahead with the therapy there and then we again come back so one of the major things removed one of the barriers removed is you don't have to spend time or money in traveling there okay second barrier that we removed is is accessible to everybody okay we also had a lot of clients who were tested positive for covid and they were under quarantine now under quarantine they cannot get out of their homes but they will still be suffering from neck pain back pain they might be asymptomatic because of covid but they cannot get out now how do these people get access to therapy the easiest safest way is telehealth okay so that is how we have improved the lives of people stuck at home and it's not just that i mean a couple of days ago i was actually responding to somebody who had asked something regarding physiotherapy and he had uh, unfortunately told me that i have a back pain but i live in a village the only option i have for treatment is youtube and i was like don't go ahead for youtube you are the kind of people for whom telehealth has been built you know don't get your medical advice from youtube so people who are in villages i mean you might not have access you might not even have roads but everybody has a phone right now because with phones and internet being so cheap so all you need is your phone most people have their laptops or you might be having a tablet or something where you can go ahead or and access telehealth so the access has improved and now talking about stats so we checked like people before from 2016 onwards they checked the reliability and the validity that is the accuracy between in house treatments as well as telehealth and they found an agreement of 99.3% in fact there was one more great thing that they found that people adhered or they stuck to their programs because there was no travel anymore okay there was no getting late anymore uh, even if somebody was traveling for leisure or for business they could still attend their sessions there was a lot of flexibility with timings you could be in your house in your pjs and still attend the session so people adhered to their treatments and if you continue to follow through your treatments that's when you see improvement so people satisfaction with their treatment improved so this really baffled the scientists as well who were doing this research that how are people more satisfied with online treatments than with in person because online treatments you could continue it for the required duration by being anywhere in this world in any time zone 
just need to wake up and put this on so telehealth has come a long way uh telehealth is used by a lot of my uh, peers as well and i have been able to go ahead with assessments with therapy rehabilitation and even been able to shift my clients into fitness like people who came with injuries i moved them into fitness and they are so happy they are like we don't want to leave our houses anymore like we just have you so we'll just continue with our sessions with you we just you made you broke the barriers you just made it easy and accessible for everybody in the entire world secondly cost like imagine the cost of seeing somebody online and actually traveling somewhere and seeing them you know you pay for your cab you pay for petrol with the petrol prices going up and all so there are just so many advantages of moving into telehealth you know the most amazing part that i liked is i think there are two most amazing part in life there's nothing like doing work or you know staying in your boxes or pjs the whole day i have learned that <laughs> in good way during the pandemic okay. so and plus you know as you said you know internet has changed the game so much today in, you don't know what have proper infrastructure or hospitals things like that but internet is there and when we have geniuses like you who really know how to use the internet and take the you know think forward and the way you are helping people in a small remote place giving them the best of the services there's nothing better so you know that it, it is so amazing when we see that you know that is why people keep coming back to you and especially if somebody from a small town is coming you can understand you know how vast this entire thing is guys i have been personally one person who never believed in this she may change my mindset and as i say you know my running credits my flexibility my lifting things everything changed after you know dr mukherji came into the picture especially my running something where i was you know having so much problem so much problem she i've not met her you know personally ever we've always done an online session i sitting in chennai she sitting in bangalore but internet has made it so smooth so you know my running performance entirely goes to her so you know this concept of is your therapy it works and you guys have to try it So, coming to one of my last questions, I'm still sticking to this subject of ours because I think somehow this is a subject where people are, you know, still realizing. Okay, there's a very, very big change happening. Okay, usually when we go to a physiotherapy clinic, things like that, there are many different gadgets I've seen. Gadgets that I never understood. Things you can patch, you know, other wired things and equipments, blah blah blah. Never used it on me. So I'm very happy about it. But you know do people require something for treatment and things like that because people will people have this you no know, no i have to go there gudari saman hai saman ke bina kaise karoge so people have that concept yeah. is, is it true do we need all this you know for physiotherapy for treatment things like that i have never required anything like that i don't think you know anything was required so when you tell the people out there how you know what is required what is not Okay so what i would like to tell people is again evidence based practice comes into picture here now all of the techniques that you are talking about all of the machines that we used to use we used to use it years ago physiotherapy has gone like like it's left all of those equipments far behind and now physiotherapy is all about movement mobility mobilizing an area strengthening it or stretching it or diagnosing the problem correctly so machines i do not go ahead with using machines i do not propagate machines because they are an outdated technique okay uh, secondly machines only give you symptomatic relief for the time being pretty much similar to a painkiller or a muscle relaxant which you can use for a short duration but again temporary solutions don't work for a long time if you really want to improve your condition build up your strength you really need to get off uh, your chair and you need to move around and you need to work actively with your physiotherapist now this is what i was talking about physiotherapy is the only place where the patient or the client is an active participant if i give you exercise and you don't move you're not going to see changes so and so this becomes really important because people keep thinking oh if there are no machines if i don't have dumbbells i still have people asking like i don't have any weights at home how do i exercise do we need weights for rehab what all equipment do we require and i would like to tell them that all you need is probably an exercise mat and there are some people who don't even have that and i can easily give them exercises either on their divan or on their beds or on the ground just 
fold a bed sheet and keep it there so that it's comfortable for you to exercise so when i'm talking about breaking barriers we have to break these barriers as well where the person thinks that no i should have an entire home gym uh, you know to be able to go ahead with physiotherapy i don't think that is required at all if you require dumbbells you can use 1 kg bottles uh, fill water in them fill half a water to use them as a 500 uh, ml or you know 500 grams uh, weight and i have been able to uh, you know exercise most like during the pandemic i had a lot of national and international level athletes and they had to all get back to tournaments once the lockdown got released so i had to train each and every one of them at home most of them they did not have equipment so trust me guys body weight exercises and you know using your own weights at home weights at like using your furniture to be able to modify your exercise this is so simple you just need somebody who can guide you in the right way so if you want a lot of weights uh, you can just put a uh, books into a bag and use it as a body weight exercise or or uh, you can use your own body weight and make the exercise difficult like probably do it in an inclined position there are so many ways so all you need is a mat and probably a ball for release like a tennis ball don't spend money on foam roller and all also too fancy uh, not required okay i usually only go ahead with probably suggesting a theraband if required if i need to increase or amp up the intensity but that's for mostly like 5 to 10% of the clients so uh, please understand that telehealth is so easy the barriers are actually in our head and uh, we if you really get the correct guidance the therapy can reach you at your place and you don't require to spend money on any um, you know expensive equipment for it you know you, you you this is this is where you know you're teaching people the hacks of working out at home you know mostly people i don't have this i don't have that you know excuses but now you're giving them hacks like books and things like that you know so this is a lot of knowledge going out there for people like a guy like me i remember when you were talking about home workouts i went and bought the battle rope okay now the problem is i realized i live in an apartment on the third floor and it was all around and i like a chant bam 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 and my <laughs> group is going who is jumping at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and this is coming from the seventh floor where i'm working out on the third floor so guys if you work out at home listen to her don't be a person like me and disturb everybody in and around okay act <laughs> dr mukherjee is giving you those are better act you know I, I, when you were talking about the equipments and things like that now since people know i worked in gyms and things like that and they'll come to me especially if they have a sprain or something i had two three weird people come can you help us can you help us i'm like how can i help you no i had a sprain give a treatment or something i'm like i'm not qualified for that so at a point where i got so annoyed when people used to come i said you know the only treatment i know is shock treatment so you know we'll try giving it a slight of shock and that actually reduced people to come and ask me that. i hope you don't <laughs> when you say shock treatment people will tend to stay away okay this guy does know what he's saying so anyway so you have given out so much information today on physiotherapy in and out you know challenges how things are hacks towards the end you know the i like the best part is you know about the heart patients and how you handle things and how you say that you know how a physiotherapy is important for a sports persons you know a title to come in so things like that so now towards the what is the last punch line or what is the last message that you would like to give people out there today so the last punch line is actually a very commonly used line is that a doctor usually adds years to your life but a physiotherapist adds life to your years that means they make your quality of life so much more amazing uh, your activities like there is no point in living until you are 100 if you cannot get up and move around and be active and do everything you wanted to do when you retire right and if you want to be able to do all of that pain free your movement good you want to run a marathon when you are 40 or 50 all of that is possible like it's a myth age you know like age limits you age is a myth you are only as old as you think and whatever you want to begin with get proper guidelines get proper help from a physiotherapist because they can really understand how your body is right now 
measure it completely measure the baseline get to know your goals and help you reach there and only a physiotherapist will be able to do that not a regular doctor who is not specialized in movement so i would suggest it's we are not just there for athletes and performance artists we are there for regular people who suffer from a sedentary lifestyle or a usual pain or ache on the neck or back which is you know not making your life very great right now so whatever it is that you require a physiotherapist is there to help you with that well she, she couldn't have put in a better way you know making things pain free as you know she likes to say you know movement is medicine so you know this is an, this has actually been one of the most amazing sessions we've had i think a lot of lot of amazing knowledge i think a new meaning to physiotherapy is going to be you know set par very soon by people like dr mukherjee so we should give them a double thumbs up for that so anyway Thank you. you guys have had a lot of knowledge this has been a very interesting and long session but i think this has been one of the most knowledge giving session so if you guys like it if you guys see it and like it please do like the video and share it to your friends i'm going to be posting this so you can watch it offline anytime so i hope everybody is got a very different idea of physiotherapy today i really don't have a punchline because honestly after today's session i am like it's a different <laughs> level of solutes to physiotherapists you know so it's like that with me today today i am like okay not my day today is dr mukherjee's day so we will end with her punchline so guys i hope you guys like the video i hope there is a lot of knowledge that has been shared i hope you guys you know make use of it so you know today i can very can very you know towards the end i'll only say today physiotherapy has a very different meaning you can see the knowledge the efforts they put in so hats off to them so anyways dr mukherjee let's sign off at this this has been an interesting session i thank you so much for your time and next week we again look forward thursday is with dr mukherjee i think it's becoming so it's going to be a good thing anyways thank you thank you so much for your time and thank you for thank the knowledge thank you okay thank you so much for the knowledge okay thank you Take care guys this is Dr Mukherjee and Hustling Muscles signing off i hope everybody has a great evening today thank you so much take care take care bye